Arcady is modeled after pastoral paintings by the Rococo painter Francois Boucher. Although he was hardly a scholar, Boucher's pastoral fantasies have an allegorical significance. Not merely a sentimental misrepresentation of agricultural life, pastoral paintings belong to the tradition of Arcadian poetry. The Arcadian theme is a venerable tradition of Renaissance art and poetry, beginning with Jacobo Sanazaro's pastoral romance, Arcadia, which he wrote in the 1480s and published in 1504. Disappointed in love, the protagonist, Sincero, retreats from the city of Naples in search of an idealized pastoral existence among the shepherds, inspired by the idols of Theocritus. Amidst his daydreaming, a frightful vision prompts him to go back to the city, upon which he discovers that his beloved has died. Her death represents the loss of Arcadia. The tone of the poem is melancholic, replete with elegiac descriptions of the lost world of Arcadia. Arcadia is always represented in paradoxical conjunction with death, as it is in Nicolas Poussin's Et in Arcadia Ego, which depicts the tragic discovery of death and consequent invention of the art of painting by Arcadian shepherds. Another influential work of Renaissance poetry on the theme of Arcadia was Sir Philip Sidney's The Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia, published in the 1580s. The main characters, as the title suggests, are all royal visitors of the countryside, a motif which would recur in Rococo painting, especially in works by Jean-Antoine Watteau. The poetry most relevant to my own painting was Arcadia Prosas y Versos by the Spanish playwright and poet Lope de Vega, published in 1598. I did my best to paint the following description, quote, does not the pleasantness of this place carry in itself sufficient reward for any time lost in it? Do you not see how all things conspire together to make this country a heavenly dwelling? Do you not see the grass, how in color they exceed the emerald, every one striving to pass his fellow, and yet they are all kept of an equal height? And do you not see the rest of these beautiful flowers, each of which would require a man's wit to know and his life to express? Do not these stately trees seem to maintain their flourishing old age, with the only happiness of their feet being clothed in perpetual spring, because no beauty here should ever fade? Doth not the air breathe health, which the birds, delightful both to ear and eye, do daily solemnize with the sweet harmony of their voices? Is not every echo thereof a perfect music? And these fresh and delightful brooks, how slowly they glide away, as loath to leave the company of so many things united in perfection. And with a sweet murmur they lament their forced departure. Certainly, certainly, cousin, it must needs be that some goddess inhabits this region, who is the soul of the soil, for neither is any less than a goddess worthy to be shrined in such a heap of pleasures, nor any less than a goddess could have made it so perfect a plat of the celestial dwellings. The action in Arcady centers on the young woman's gaze, fixed on a goldfinch in mid-flight. To ensure the visual significance of this glance, I have placed her eye at the center of the painting and the goldfinch at a significant point of intersection. Iconographically, the goldfinch has traditionally been used as a symbol of the crucifixion in works ranging from Raphael's Madonna of the Goldfinch in the Uffizi to the famous goldfinch by Carol Fabritius in the Moritz House. According to pious legend, the bird acquired its red spot as it attempted to pull a thorn from Christ's brow, upon which it was splashed with a drop of Christ's blood. The goldfinch thus represents the conjunction of death and Arcadia, while also purifying the Arcadian myth of its tragic implications. Death and suffering may rob one of worldly happiness, and yet it is by death that paradise is regained, in the first place by Christ's death, and in the second by one's own, symbolized by baptism, hence the water. And the painting is appropriately framed in a very high quality reproduction, Louis Kant's frame. 